Today I'm looking at a view of the Cotswolds, a book of photographs by Edwin Smith that was published by the Whittington Press in 2005. And the book, as we can see here, is half bound in this grey charcoal canvas-like cloth over paper sides that are printed with a repeating wood engraving pattern by Edwin Smith. And the rear board of the book is exactly the same as the front board that we saw already. Blocked on the spine in silver, we have the title of the book, A View of the Cotswolds. Nothing else there on the spine. Of course, the binding of sewn, it goes without saying. Uh, we have these striped headbands and the trimmed top edge, but the um, fore and bottom edges are left untrimmed with uneven page lengths. So that's the physical design of the outside of the book. The book, of course, comes in a slip case. It's a fairly standard uh, Whittington Press offering if you're familiar with their work. So the slip case is covered with black paper, both uh, inside and out. And then the top and bottom ends are covered in the same charcoal canvas like cloth that is used in the binding of the book. So let's open up the book itself. We have plain black end papers matching the theme that we saw also from the slipcase. And then we open out onto the half title and we get our first look at um, this Bougra Bouton mold made paper, which has this really deep cream color, which uh, gives it a really luscious look and also it has a nice coarse texture so it's a pretty nice tactile experience handling this particular volume uh, and it's a bit of a treat to have such a richly colored paper to look at then we have the title spread which is pretty much classic whittington press so we have a fairly austere centered layout here that printed in two colors which is um, also a nice touch a view of the Cotswolds, photographs by Edwin Smith. And then facing it by way of a frontispiece, we have the first of Edwin Smith's photographs. So Edwin Smith was a famous landscape and architectural photographer who was active during the 20th century. And this book collects a series of photographs he made in the Cotswolds in the early 1950s. The Cotswolds, for those who don't know, is a region of gentle rolling hills in Western England, and that's where the Whittington Press happens to be located. Here's the contents page. The book opens with a series of essays, starting with an introduction by John Randall. Um, a big part of this introduction is to just acknowledge the help of those who contributed to the project, um, but Randall also describes the genesis of the project um, how he came to be working on this particular book. Next we have um, an essay by Ian Mackenzie Kerr on Edwin Smith and Olive Cook. He had already died by the point when the project was initiated and his widow Olive Cook assisted John Randall in selecting the photographs, deciding which order they would be presented in. She too unfortunately passed away before the project could be completed, um, but she was um, a big part of the intellectual driving force behind the project. And this essay reflects on the work of Edwin Smith and Olive Cook, who were a bit of a double act in producing books about landscape and architectural history that exploited Edwin Smith's uh, photographs. Then we have an essay by Alan Powers titled The Cotswolds and Cultural Pessimism. In the late 19th, early 20th century, we see the emergence of the arts and crafts movement, which embodies a kind of rejection of the relentless modernism that had come with the Industrial Revolution. And part of that broader movement, we saw a group of intellectuals relocating to the Cotswolds, which had been a bit of an enclave that was a little bit protected from modernization. It still wasn't very industrialized, for example. And so they went there in search of a more traditional way of living. Um, and this essay is uh, about that movement and 
the mix of artists and thinkers who uh, were brought to the Cotswolds as a result. Um, and one interesting thing about that is that we really see this rejection of modernism reflected in the photographs of this book, as we'll see. They almost look like photographs from a long bygone age, even though they're barely more than half a century old. Um, and then we have the photographs themselves. They're accompanied by a commentary by Sean uh, Canucci and Rory Young. And what they have done is revisit the location of all of the photographs, or almost all of the photographs. They weren't able to identify the exact location of all of them. Um, and so they provide not only a commentary on what you're seeing in the photographs themselves, but also a bit of a description of how those places have evolved over time. Um, and those descriptions are very well informed architecturally, historically, um, and so it's really quite informative to read about these. And as you can see, they're no small captions, but um, fairly serious attempts to engage intellectually with the photographs that we see. That's all printed here on this Bougre Britain paper, presented very nicely. And then here we see the first of our photographs. These are printed by a process called tritone um, on a slightly different glossy uh, photo style paper. Um, the tritone printing gives a really nice depth of colour and tone. What I would say is that we're a bit spoiled in the 21st century. Um, we have pretty good access to relatively inexpensive coffee table style photography books. Um, and they generally have a fairly high quality of photographic reproduction. So although the reproduction here is indeed very good, it's nothing that will um, stand out from that now sort of large industry of producing such books. But a nice reproduction of the photos, nevertheless, you can see that they're reproduced for the most part full page, so we get a nice big look at the images. Um, and here we see a very typical Cotswold scene so you have this idyllic rural scene with the gentle hills, um, the stone buildings, classic Cotswold landscape. And so the book progresses um, with more of these photographs. Here's an instance where there are two photographs per page. As we read the description of the photographs, as I said, they're architecturally well informed. And these guys have a real eagle eye, so they will point out interesting things that locate the photographs in time. You know, the fact that there are no t television aerials, for example, things that a relatively ignorant reader like me might otherwise overlook. And they also describe how these scenes have changed during the intervening 50 year period. It's a little bit tantalizing and one almost wishes that you could see a modern image next to it so that you could compare and see those changes yourselves. But of course, I think that would cramp the book's style. And by now, 20 years after this book was published, those so-called modern images would themselves look a little bit dated, so I think uh, they made the right choice in leaving those out. What I've been doing is using Google Street View to take a bit of a tour around the Cotswolds and see if I can find some of these locations myself, and indeed many of them are still quite recognisable. Here you can see as an example of a photo where we have a child on this old cart. The road hasn't yet been paved, cars are still a relative rarity even though this is the 1950s and I think you'd be forgiven for thinking this was a photo from the turn of the 20th century or earlier so it's quite interesting that the Cotswolds managed to, managed to resist modernization for quite so long. Here are a couple of town scenes where we do see a few more signs of modernity um, and so it continues with more photographs along with their accompanying descriptions they cover gardens, um, country houses, as we saw, townscapes, landscapes. Here we have uh, an image or two from inside of homes of the period. Again, we have these bare walls. It looks like something Victorian, but nevertheless taken in the 1950s. Pretty nice to look at these photographs if you're interested in the history of British society, British landscape, British village life. It's quite striking that many of the properties in the book have these interesting topiaries or well-tended gardens. 
think we could learn a thing or two from our forebears in that respect. And soon enough, we reach the conclusion here, of course, is the frontispiece having been repeated again. So that's the only photograph that's in the book twice. We come to the end of the photograph section of the book, and we have now an essay by Edwin Smith himself, in which he describes a little bit his working methods of photographing cathedrals and churches. It's quite an interesting insight, especially having made your way through the book and um, viewed the photographs to understand the process that went into making those. Of course, like anybody who's mastered their art, it's always a little bit more sophisticated than it appears at first glance. And we have um, a checklist of books that contain Edwin Smith's photographs. And you can see that this checklist is quite long because he was indeed quite prolific. Looking here, I'm reminded of one other thing that I wanted to say, which is that if we take a look in the gutter of the book, we see that the binding is sewn with a black thread, which stands out as quite a contrast against this cream paper. And I thought that was a really nice artistic touch. So many more pages of um, those works of Edwin Smith. Of course, we end with the colophon. We're told this is one of 350 copies. It was typeset in Polyphilus and Fry's Baskerville. And the other thing that I should say is that of those 350 copies, this is one of 280 standard copies. There were also 70 special copies that were half bound in black leather and they came with two photographic prints that were made directly from Edwin Smith's original negatives. So that's a view of the Cotswolds. The Whittington Press, of course, is known primarily for letterpress printed books. We have um, very nice letterpress printing on that Bougra mold made paper on display here, but this is primarily a book of photographs, so it might not be what one naturally associates with the Whittington's output. Nevertheless, a very nicely made book and a very interesting book, as I said, for someone who has an interest in rural English history. The Whittington Press published a few other photographic books. There's A Slow Ride to India, there's Portraits of Presses, for example, and I plan to take a look at those on this channel before too long too. So if you're interested in that, do remember to subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this look at a view of the Cotswolds.